This podcast is brought to you by the Team Flower Conference, an industry-leading event where flower lovers from all over the world gather together for networking, learning, and celebration. Team Flower is a worldwide network of floral professionals serving nearly 2,000 members across 34 countries, and you're invited to join the community. The 2019 Team Flower Conference is taking place March 4th through 6th in Waco, Texas, and you can head to teamflower.org slash podcast to learn more. At the Team Flower Conference, you can expect to hear stage presentations from industry leaders on inspirational and educational topics in both floral design and business, connect with fellow floral professionals and build lasting relationships in a supportive community setting, network with industry support, enjoy flower-themed celebrations, and receive encouragement for wherever you are in your journey with flowers. With both rich educational content and opportunity for true connection, the Team Flower Conference is a unique breath of fresh air in a fast-paced and competitive industry. Past attendees have described the event as food for the creative soul, amazingly relevant to all stages of floral professional development and a warm and welcoming family. Whether you're a wedding florist, a flower grower, a floral artist, or just someone who loves flowers, you're welcome here. That's something truly magical that happens when we all come together, and we'd love for you to join the Team Flower Conference. If you'd like to learn more, visit teamflower.org slash podcast for the latest information. Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at angelaprofit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am talking with the founder of Team Flower, Kelly Perry, Mm -hmm. and I'm super excited because the Team Flower community, if you've never heard of it, you've got to check out their website. It's an amazing, amazing resource. And so they basically welcome, I mean, when you go to their website, it's like, welcome to the global flower community that spans generations, which I love that, experience levels and areas of expertise. And the only prerequisite is the desire to learn. And for those of you who listen to me on an ongoing basis, you know that my number one passion is education because it's so great in this industry. And so anyone who is educating the creative market, I literally just like fall in love with what they're doing. So Kelly, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, You're so welcome. Yeah, it's great to be here. Awesome. So for our listeners who might not know what you do or how you do it, like Let's start by just telling us a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. Well, from the time I was little, I've always loved bringing people together. So I was kind of the the party planner <laughs> for my family and in my friend groups and all that kind of stuff. It's interesting to see how that kind of has played out and presented itself over time. And But really, I think that's kind of at the core of who I am. And in terms of background with events and weddings and things like that. My college education, I started in interiors and fashion design and things like that business. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur from the time I was little, but 
that was around the time that the recession hit real hard. And so I was like, maybe I should have something like a little bit more stable. Of course, you kind of think through some of those, those practical things. But anyway, it ended up being perfect. I actually graduated as a family and consumer science teacher, which you may know as a home ec teacher, um, yeah. with teacher licensure and, and that kind of thing. So I got to go through the education program and I really felt like that that those were my people that I really loved that whole process. But I love teaching the other things like the design and the business and stuff like that. And the first lesson that I ever taught whenever I had to do like a sample lesson in school was on the principles of design. And I remember floating out of the class that day and thinking, if I could just teach this for the rest of my life, I would be so happy. Um, right. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because, you know, with flowers, that is such a core component of you know, that process. And so it's really fun that somehow I've kind of gotten back to that and that I get to do that now. I really enjoy that a lot. And the principles of design are still one of my favorite topics because, you know, despite, you know, we have the internet, so we think that we know everything about a topic because there's so much information out there. But what I realize when I just dig and dig and dig into it is that I really think there's principles of design that are like yet to be discovered and we get to be the people who go and explore and study and ask questions and, you know, so it's really interesting how the internet has, you know, we sort of feel like it should all be there and there is so much there, but there's still so much that we, that we don't know. So anyway, little tangent there, but, um, (laughs) I then my first job was planning recruiting events for a university. And so I was kind of in that corporate event planning world for a little while. And then I was in a car accident and had headaches every day for three years. (laughs) Three years. Oh my gosh. Um, And I just was in a place in life where I really needed to make a switch. And I felt like that the job that I was in was not something that would be sustainable for me long term and i just i needed to be able to like whatever my job was i needed to be able to control my workload a little bit more or you know leave for a doctor's appointment and not feel like i was letting my team down or you know just different things like that and so it was around that time that i uh, picked up an issue of martha stewart and she had um there were these two girls in the magazine that were carrying flowers on the streets of New York City and they were the founders of Little Flower School Brooklyn and I didn't know who they were or anything at the time but I just immediately knew when I saw that image that I needed to meet those people uh-huh. and so that kind of started my journey with flowers I had never really considered flowers as a career even at that point but that's kind of how I started my journey with flowers. With weddings specifically, I've actually been doing weddings for a while. I started making wedding cakes for people thanks to my middle school English teacher who looked at me one day in class and was like, you will make my daughter's wedding cake. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I'll do it. You know, I was always kind of like a- you were in middle school? Oh yeah. I think I was like 12 or 13 or something. And you made a wedding cake? (laughs) I mean, it was not a really glamorous wedding cake, but I made the but wedding holy cake. Holy cow! Like <laughs> I'm almost forty, and like I couldn't even. I, I, I as a oh, parent, like, trust me, you could. You um, could do well, it. <laughs> I'm like I can do a lot, but like I cannot sing, and I cannot cook, and like I can fix some things on a cake, like by YouTubing it. But sure. oh my, that's incredible, though. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's so funny. So like, my mom was driving me to you know, buy my cake supplies and like on my deliveries or whatever. But I always laugh. I must've been real cheap (laughs) for grown adults to trust like (laughs) middle schooler with their wedding cake. I just thought that was so funny, but I've always loved weddings. I mean, weddings are such a special thing to be a part of like as wedding professionals, we get to go into the places that even their closest family and friends don't get to go. And I think about that a lot with flowers when I deliver the bouquet, like I, I go into the bridal suite and like, I get to be one of the first people that sees her and I get to give her a smile and share peace. And same thing with like standing under the ceremony before anybody gets there and just preparing that. I think it's such a special 
I think it's such a special thing that we get to do. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Well, a couple of things that you said, like, it sounds like at a very early age, like the fact that you knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur early on. And so I have a question about that. Did you, were your parents entrepreneurs? Like, did you grow up in that world a little bit? Yeah. So my dad, my dad is a dentist and he owned his own practice. Okay. Gotcha. Still does. And I think I, I liked that appearance of freedom that actually yeah. I thought he had. <laughs> yeah. Right. We actually do. We're like, Oh, we work more than we actually yeah, be for right, someone else. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So now as an entrepreneur and in having um, more conversations with, you know, my dad and different yeah. things, I realized like, Oh, he like actually can't leave his, he can't leave his uh -uh. practice anytime he wants. And you know, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some similarities and differences there between what he does and what I do. But yeah, that was just one of those things that I, I love that. And I actually just love that I've always been a dreamer. And so I think that that's, what's so fun about being an entrepreneur. There are so many things that you could do and just the possibility and the imagination. And I, I really, that's one of the things that I love about this work. Yeah. And then you said that when you went to school, you did take some business classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you think you made that choice because you knew that you wanted to do something with entrepreneurship? Absolutely. Yeah. I snuck into the senior level entrepreneurship classes <laughs> somehow. The, the professor was new. <laughs> like sneaking into movies. <laughs> Let's watch three movies today. <laughs> so that was my first business class that I had in the department, but I'm so grateful for it because there are things that while I was going through the class, I had no idea what they were talking about and what some of these terms were. And like we wrote a business plan, but and you don't have context for what a term means, any kind of, you know, connection to something else you already know, or you already understand it all just felt so foreign to me. Um, mm -hmm. But now looking back, there are things, your brain's always absorbing things, like whether you realize it or not, which is why it's so important to make sure we're absorbing good stuff. But it just has kind of come out all of these years later. I'm like, oh, the da 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 da. And I'm like, how do I even know that term? That's so funny. Funny, but it's from it's from that little season in life. So anyway, I'm really grateful that that all that worked out. But yeah, always yeah. and with having the cake decorating business, Kelly's cakes. <laughs> Kelly's cake. That's um, awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love being able to do that and just that I didn't have to like rely on my parents or like ask them for money or I don't know different yeah. different things like that that were just kind of like I. I enjoyed about it. My yeah. little savings account. <laughs> well, and I feel, like the reason I asked that is because I feel like you're very unique in that. Well, first off, most of us, how we even get into this industry, it's a complete accident or it's fun or it's, it's cause we're creative. But what I find in talking to people, creatives all around the world, there's like two consistent things. Like they didn't really know that they wanted to be an entrepreneur because they didn't really understand that. And I don't know if that's like a generational thing. And so people just kind of jump into it. They do it for fun and they think that it's just not a gift. And so they work for free a lot and they mm -hmm. don't know how to run a business. They know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And like, and mm -hmm. then, you know, there's some people that I help and I coach and they'll come to these conferences and these classes and they're like literally at the end. Cause I tell people like, no question is stupid. Like if I use a term and you don't know what it means, please ask, you know, don't feel like you have to go Google it. And I'll never forget. I was speaking at the special event and literally people were like, what's ROI. And mm. I'm like return on investment. And one girl was like, please don't think she's like, I'm not stupid, but like, what does that mean? Mm. And so then I was like, oh my gosh, these people, the creatives, they're amazing. But when it comes to like tracking overhead and expenses and how to yeah. charge, and then when you have labor and when you grow your team and then you have insurance, like they literally have no business skills. Mm -hmm. And so I even worked with a company who they teach design for like a whole week on like flowers and drape and they travel all over the world. 
And the last day they do a business class. So I, I worked with them for a year and taught it. And, but their students, it was like deer in the headlights. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, let's back up here and really decide, do they understand what an entrepreneur is? And are they doing this for fun and as a hobby? And if that, if so, that is okay. But that Friday day should be opt in or opt out. Like if you're not interested in a business, then don't come to that class because it just bores them for eight hours. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you find this at your conference, but do you find that people come, they're more like hobbyist for fun or they're really looking to grow a business or they're just looking for ideas or do you know? (laughs) Well, yeah. Team flower, team flowers for people who are in a flower business Business, primarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But the, I mean, there's all kinds of resources and things. So you don't necessarily have to be in one, but I would say the people who attend an event or a workshop, a workshop conference, whatever are thinking about, um, business for sure. But that is one of the, that is one of the most common, um, challenges that I feel like our members face is that pricing component of it. Yeah. And that business side of things, because unless you're really passionate about business, there, there's really no reason why you would really dig into that. But the business side of it is what allows us to be able to continue and to sustain the, the dream, like the thing that we're really excited and passionate about. So And I think it's kind of like math, right? So some people are like, oh, I'm just not a math person or I'm not a, you know, we we can kind of say these things about ourselves and put labels on ourselves about not being able to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Um, And I actually think that everybody can be a business person if they want to be a business person. You know, it's just, it's a skill that we, it's a skill that we can learn. So anyway, some people are more, I'm very passionate about it. So that kind of drives me and and can take the lead a little bit sometimes, but, um, you know, it just, it depends. It's, it is definitely though a skill that, that we can all learn and, and be a part of and knowing those things like the return on investment of, you know, whenever you do a styled shoot or something like that, like, do you kind of have some evidence that you're, that you're headed in the right direction with that money yeah. spend? You know, is it, even things like even time investment too. Yeah. I, I think about that a lot, the other currency and just, just making sure that the things that we are going after, we have a, you know, sometimes we can do things for fun or whatever, but having that balance of things that really are driving your business forward versus just being fun. Like we need the balance of both. So, and then the other thing that I find, and again, I don't know if you see this, but I feel like a lot of people that I coach, they literally work a full-time job for security and then they do their passion on the side for fun. And they're still trying to figure out how to make the passion a business Mm -hmm. and still live. And again, (laughs) it goes back to figuring out how much do, is it going to cost you to run your business? Mm-hmm. And it amazes me where a lot of floral designers that, you know, they're young, they, they're amazing at it. But like, again, they're like, well, I just work out of my garage. So I don't, what's overhead. I don't have any, over, I'm like, actually you do yeah. like, you know, and with flowers and stuff, like you've got supplies and you've got shipping and, um, people don't understand with flowers like I, I of course educate my brides. They're like, Oh my God, this, I could go to Costco. And I'm like, well, okay. First <laughs> off, there's two things you need to understand. Number one, flowers for Saturday wedding. I don't know what you said, what your thoughts are, but I, uh-huh. I hear them, but I'm like, typically things, a lot of things come in on Wednesday or Thursday. And it, you know, for a 300 person wedding, we're, we're D D stimming <laughs> and, uh-huh. and like, So doing, and I know that you guys do videos too. So like doing these videos to help brides understand, like it's more about the labor Mm -hmm. and cleaning the vases and, um, vases have to go up and down and all these candelabras and all these things that we're doing. And, and then you're also paying for creative design. Like Mm -hmm. that's not, and especially with Pinterest these days, like, oh my gosh, like 
the expectations of what people understand things cost and then what's re realistic is like two different things. So I don't, I'm totally going off on a tangent about this, but are you, do you find that too, where brides, like they don't understand that the cost comes in through the labor and the love of caring for the flowers for four or five days. It's like kids. Yeah. And then you have to feed them and water them and cut them. I mean, trim them and, um, and put them together. Like, yeah. do you find that a lot? Well, I, I think one of the, this kind of swings back to another challenge that I feel like a lot of our members face and some things that I faced in the first couple of years, whenever I was getting used to the flow of client communications. And I, I really feel like that leading, leading people through expectation setting, all those kinds of things, explaining the process a little bit on the front end. Those are all things that I like to do before they see a breakout of money or, you know, all of those kinds of things, just sort of like, um, establishing your role a little bit and what does it look like and what do those things mean? But I mean, frankly, the cost of flowers is, is just very expensive. So, you know, wholesale blooms that you might be able to pick up at Trader Joe's or, you know, Costco or whatever, you're getting, you're getting the things that are extra or that are, produced in such high volume quantities that they aren't super special. And that's the difference between purchasing your flowers somewhere like that than having them come from a florist um, who is special ordering those things, who is sourcing them from a lot of times several different places to be able to find those really nuanced things yeah. that are suitable for a color palette. And so yep. there is so there is such a big difference from walking in and buying something that's volume and mass market to something that has been designed specifically for you. And even yeah. within flowers, there's all kinds of different business models that you can have within flowers. You can go that sort of ultra luxury, you know, custom design. You can have something that's more templated and more affordable. You can have packages where you are working with flowers that are more readily available or are grown in, you know, larger yeah. quantities or whatever. But yeah, I think that, um, all of those, all of those Roll little pieces of it. <laughs> yeah, they're all a, yeah. They're all a part of, of that pricing component and, and helping people know yeah. why I don't feel like brides understand too that like, like exactly what you just said, like to get the exact thing that you want and designers have relationships with all these different, literally growers all over the world to make sure that like the quality and all, I mean, it's just important. Yeah. Well, that's another thing that can all of a sudden, you know, be something that pops up is yeah. That quality issue, you get something and the flowers have a life before they ever reach your door as a floral designer. And, um, sometimes you need to, to, you know, toss something in the trash and replace it for, for yep. something more suitable. So that is, it is tricky. And especially for people who love flowers, mm -hmm. you you're drawn naturally to those really unique, special things. And you want to fill your whole order with those. And then you end up going over budget, or maybe you're not quite sure how to put the piece together. And you really don't know like exactly what will go in each product or, you know, how to calculate what your quantities need to be or something like that. I see that a lot as well. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can also lead to, going over budget and then leads to something else called burnout, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, which a lot of people can struggle with. It is hard. It's hard work. It's beautiful. It's beautiful work. It's meaningful work. Um, but you've got to have that balance there with the business component to make sure that everything that you don't feel, you know, a lot of stress or pressure, um, financially or that you feel like you have to cut corners with your salary or not or not pay yourself at all. Even yeah. when you first get started, you need to pay yourself something, something mm -hmm. just to get into the habit of, of making that withdrawal and seeing yourself and your time as um, an expense for mm -hmm. your business. That is 
very, very important. Yeah. So, so we know you got into the industry with cakes and bridal, which, and I loved how you said you were looking through Martha Stewart magazine and then you saw this image and it just resonated with you. And you're like, I have to go for this. Like, I love that. Like, what would you say is special, unique about your service and like what you guys provide at Team Flower? Well, I think something that I really like about Team Flower, I guess you could say, is the accessibility of it. So we have a huge library of free content that we are always adding to every week. And I like that I can connect with people um, regardless of what kind of, you know, budget they may have. If they feel called to a life of flowers, I want to be available and ready to support and to, to be able to offer some of those things. And another thing that I think is special about Team Flower is the holistic approach that I take to it. So you know, we might be having a lesson and in, in talking about design, but we also might be talking about balance in our life too, while yeah. we're, you know, making those connections between design and life, business, and kind of how it all flows and works together because it really it is, it is all connected. And so I love to think about those ways that that connect and it's also multifaceted. So there's a lot of different ways that you can learn, whether it be online, it can be at an event, it could, you know, it just all kinds of, you could listen on the podcast. There's all kinds of different ways. And so I love, I love that about it as well, regardless of what your learning style is, there's kind of a little area that you can get plugged in and um, move forward. Yeah. So like, do you guys pull your members or survey your members to find out like, what do you need most? How can we help you the most? And like, what do they love the most? Mm -hmm. Well, we have done, we have done some of that and we're always listening. So I think having an event and just being able to listen to what the, what the struggles are with individual people. I mean, one person speaks it, but there's more people that represent whatever that need is. And so a lot of them are similar and in common in some of the things that, you know, we've talked about in the episode so far, but, um, I think that, that talking and, and listening and dialoguing, those are really important parts, whether you're in a, you know, whether it's for Team Flower or whether it is for whatever type of business, um, you know, you may have, that dialogue is really important. And um, in terms of what our members love, um, I guess some feedback that I've received recently would be the culture. They maybe weren't expecting some of the things that, that they found when they got there, but they loved it. They loved how it felt whenever they were with us or part of it. And some people have made comments about how it really encouraged them to think a little bit deeper than they had been before. And that even people who came to the very first workshop that we hosted, it's funny to reconnect with them and they'll just be last week I was doing something and I thought about that time that we were together. And, you know, like we talked about how the brain works and how it brings things back to us when we need them. Just that longevity piece of it as well, I think is something that people appreciate because it is an investment to, to go to an event, to get your, you know, to buy your plane ticket. There's that financial piece, but there's also time and time is really valuable as well. So coming to an, an event or something like that, it, it, it is definitely a sacrifice, which I take very, very seriously, but it's also something that I think is so good. And I really encourage people to do, whether it's with us or, you know, really anywhere, anytime that we have an opportunity to connect with people, to look at each other in the face and to give and receive and express, like those are just really special moments. 
Yeah. So I, um, I, it's, it's not natural. We don't naturally want to, a, a lot of, a lot of us don't naturally want to like come out and be like, Oh, I'm going to go into a room full of people. Most people will tell me that they're introverts. Most people will tell me that they're, you know, shy or they don't like being in groups or, you know, whatever. I, yeah. I, I could totally understand that. But, um, anyway, Always, always welcome at Team Flower. You will find yeah. a friend if you want to find a friend. That's what I always like to say. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and I feel like we've already kind of alluded to some of this and like creatives and floral design. Like, do you guys have, like, what do your members say? Like, uh, challenges in the industry. Like, do you find as things grow and technology grows and Pinterest grows, like what are the challenges that people are saying in the industry that they, they need help with? That client communication piece of it, I think is one of the, the biggest pieces of it because as people will express to me different things that, that they, they struggle with, I a lot of times can sort of backtrack that to something in a client communication process. And so what I mean by that is, um, let's see what would a good example be here. Um, the whole thing that, like that you mentioned about that, the Pinterest, the cost of the Pinterest piece is exceeding budget or something like that. The process that I like to move people through whenever they're talking with clients, or, or maybe you get like a bunch of clients that are like, don't have the correct budget for the product or service that you offer a lot of times that can just be because you didn't clearly communicate what it is that you offer and the general budget range that that type of product and service, you know, happen to be in before you've taken them further down the track. So it's covering things like in a specific order and really leading clients well through the process. So whenever you have something that pops up that you're like, Oh, this is a pain point. It happens every time, you know, or you just, just being aware of those things that sort of, you know, rub you the wrong way or whatever. If you can sort of track it back, I, I don't have a lot of tolerance for things like that. So I'm always like, okay, identified problem. Where is this coming from? Let's, let's dig down. Let's find the root. Like, where is it? What is it? what do we need to to do or to adjust and gosh the garden like shows us so many of those so many of those parallels with life lessons but yeah we can we can look at the leaf and you know sort of track it back to what might be going on underneath of the the surface. So, but I think that's a big a big frustration because you know when you love to arrange flowers you love to arrange flowers. And so generally that's not the the pain point piece. Although sometimes there's some things that can be frustrating, like, you know, it feels too tight is one of the most common frustrations that people have from a a design perspective. Um, And really we have to feel open and really loose in our hearts for our designs to follow suit. (laughs) So it, it turns into talking a little bit about that sometimes first. Um, so anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that um like I was speaking at a a flower conference just a couple months ago in DC and the it was the this it was like a conference with thousands of people and they've been doing it like forever. But yeah. this is the first year they introduced business tracks, mm-hmm. which I didn't even know that until I like showed up. <laughs> so it was just it was kind of fascinating to me how they sold the business tracks and how the first thing I saw was they gave people a choice and it was like you can either go learn how to be more productive in your business or learn how to be more profitable which is what I spoke about which doesn't Mm -hmm. sound sexy when you're up against like go learn the latest and greatest trend in bridal bouquets for 2019 and I'm like what the hell do you think they're gonna choose come on (laughs) So, you know, these sessions weren't shot here. <laughs> yeah, like they weren't that large. And it was funny because day one, the classes were so small. But again, I don't ever get offended. I'm just like, why don't people want to like know about business? Like, I'm not a numbers girl. I'm not a business girl at all. But I've been trained and taught and potty trained as my accountant would call it on (laughs) how to educate myself. And what really helped me as a creative was when 
I, like, and you also said a key word a minute ago, tracking. And so I didn't used to do any of that. And then one year I got a coach and he's like, I want you to track this and this and this. And then I'm like, well, I can't do that. And I mean, I fought it so hard. And he's like, then I'm going to fire you. I'm like, oh my God, I've never been fired with anything. So, okay, I'll do it, (laughs) (laughs) you know, because like I'm a people pleaser. And so, but that changed my life. It changed everything. And my accountant, my business manager sat me down and they're like, Angela, you did, you did not only did over 30 weddings for free this year, you paid people to do their weddings because Mm -hmm. you didn't know how to charge appropriately. You weren't tracking your time. You weren't tracking this, you weren't tracking that. And so then I kind of became psycho business girl Mm -hmm. about like, okay, this is, you know, it's hard work. And while it's, it's such an honor to be part of these people's days, especially for weddings, it's hard work. And so now it's a lot easier for me to say to people after understanding the numbers, by the way, they charted it out for me on this big poster board, um, like, (laughs) you know what? We're not a good fit and that's okay. Cause I'm not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I, that really helped me. And then the other thing I'll say at this floral conference, I was at, there was one new company that's kind of like on the scene that, and I'm a, I'm a tech software geek. And so it's called details. Yeah. And so I start, I started to look into it. And again, I was just completely blown away that their booth at this place was not just, I mean, with thousands of people around it, because I looked at it and I'm like, this is a really good software because it addresses, again, this is what made me think about it. What you just said, people don't know. It's like, if you're going to make a bouquet and you need five hydrangeas and six peonies and 13 ranunculus and you know all your colors in it you're able to like put in how many per stem not that you have to get give the client that level of detail right. however what i've learned is being in the south people love the transparency of truth and they love the transparency of like okay i need this and then that's, that's going to get me this. And there's like an inspiration picture. And there's actually one floral designer in in Nashville where I'm from, who's using it. And she's like, Oh my gosh, this has changed my life. And, but she's very tech savvy, which again, Mm -hmm. with creatives is kind of not the norm. So I didn't get a chance to talk to them about what is their training rollout program for the creatives to teach them how to use this like on the go. But I do feel like there are better business options and softwares and strategies for people now with the appropriate train, uh, training. So I didn't know like with, with the Team Flower Conference that's coming up in March of 2019, do you guys have any software that you will be, that anyone's going to be talking about to help run a business? That is not something that we have set up yet at at the time of us recording this. There might be, there might not be. (laughs) (laughs) So so you're more, so the focus is more like how to do, how to design. Again, I've learned the business part isn't like that fun, but I feel like it's what people need. And you're so good at it. Definitely. No, business is Business is definitely, um, business is definitely a part of it. My session last year was about pricing and ordering and awesome. And that whole piece of it, which you have to have an understanding of before you can actually use those softwares. I, I think, um, yeah. just before you even get into something like that. Now the wedding side of my business at this point is very, very lean and it is scaled in a way that aligns with team flower and what we're doing here and all those kinds of pieces. And so my business model with that is so lean at the moment that I don't have a need for it. Um, I'm also not the tech person in our business. (laughs) That is Jesse. Totally get it. I totally get it. Um, totally get it. I do. I do definitely have dreams for a different type of business model for a different type of market where something like that, I feel like could be very helpful, especially in just keep it project management and keeping things, um, in track and, you know, yeah. moving forward and those kinds of things. So, but no, yeah. that's not something that I can really speak super knowledgeably to at the moment, but gotcha. I think it's great to know that, you know, 
that they're out there and they're always getting better. Yeah. So fun yeah. about it. So the other thing I've learned in working with creatives who surround themselves with people who are not like them is they really want to stay in the creative space, like in their workshop and like not do any computer stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, they hire somebody and they work that into their overhead and their prices who does those proposals. So they're not sitting behind the computer because that's not what they're good at and that's not what they like. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really, um, you know, a way to grow. But as we wrap up, where can our listeners find you? Yeah. Well, we're just over at teamflower.org and Instagram is just teamflower. Um, so you can connect with us and, and find us over there. The wedding business is philosophy flowers. Um, if you wanted to take a peek at that and that'll be shifting and growing and changing a little bit here in the next couple of years. Um, but yeah, so you can take a look awesome. and see what it is now and follow our journey forward. <laughs> And you also have a podcast on iTunes. So where can people listen to your podcast? Yeah, it's just called the Team Flower Podcast. So if you just want to search it in iTunes or wherever it is that you're listening to your podcast, we interview a wide range of floral designers and talk about all kinds of things, business, design, life, what it's like to, you know, run a business and, and have a family, you know, all kinds of different topics. They're growing, um, different types of things. We actually had somebody who is a flower grower, but so passionate about food. And so we started talking about food a little bit. <laughs> and I have been making the okra on that episode <laughs> that That's we awesome. talked about. Yes all the time. Now it's so yummy. So anyway, never know what you might find over there, but it's a lot of fun. And yeah. So if you love flowers, that's a good place to connect. That's awesome. And then the next big thing coming up for Team Flower, March of 2019 is your conference. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we're really, I, I love the conference. It's like, I love being with people. So <laughs> um, it's like my big Thing of the year. I get to hop out of the house and look at people's faces and just hear their dreams. And I love that whole process. It's so fun. So we have several different speakers that are coming in this year. We have Katie from Ponderosa and Time and Julio from The Flower Hat and Bows and Arrows and just all kinds of, all kinds of speakers. Our friend Lauren um, from Canada is talking about her client communication process. So that is something that she is, she loves business. And so that's what she's going to be talking about. Jesse's talking about building a team and healthy team culture, which is something that he's so good at. I'm really proud of my husband, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> I love um, it. So, well, yeah, those are just a couple, just a couple of things that a couple of things that we're chatting about. But you can check, you can check out all the details online if you're um, interested in connecting with us. Yeah, if you guys go to teamflower.org and click on events. The conference, Team Flower Conference, is right there. It's March 4th through 6th, 2019 in Waco, Texas. And there's only a limited number of seats. So if you are interested, be sure to go on, secure your spot. And I just want to say that for all the amazing speakers that I see on the website and all the subjects that are being covered the ROI, like the return on investment to invest in yourself is priceless. And I love how you guys give the option of people to have a payment plan. And again, I get it. Like you can invest in yourself, but in order to stay relevant, you got to get out and you got to learn and invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. So Kelly, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I hope that everybody has a great day. Do you have any final thoughts, Kelly? Oh, just to everybody who's listening, I just wanted to say thank you to you. The work that you do matters and it's really important. And regardless of what aspect you may be in regarded to, you know, events, they are, they are those special moments. You know, it's an opportunity that creates a memory and I think that it's really powerful what we can do to shape minds and heal hearts and just create a happy, a happy moment or a happy memory for somebody. So good job doing what you're doing. Awesome. <laughs> well, Kelly, thank you so much for everything. I hope that you have a great day. 
If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends, and I am so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.